kill the lights. Kill the lights. Yeah, yeah. Who knows that song? Oh, I knew you were going to ask. I, it might, yeah, it was. It was a Luke Bryan. Yeah. It was an album, too. Yeah. I think it's been a lot of songs. <laughs> it might have been. All right, you ready? In three, two. Welcome to the Wobbin' Away Bowser Nissan Theater. We are glad to be joined by a big machine recording artist, Brian Falaze. And Brian. Brian. Why did I say Brian? My name's, yeah, because, there we go. Because a lot of people do. You know what? Like, here, I was so worried about your last name. Because do you know my uncle? Does, do I know your uncle? Is his, his name, name Brian? Brian? There you go. <laughs> Ryan. All right. See, we all make mistakes. I was so worried about your last name, though, because it is not spelled like it sounds. You did it earlier. Let's hear it. Falaze. Yes. Okay, Ryan right. Falaze. There, I got it right. There yeah. we go. We can get this going. So we were talking about that earlier because my last name has never been spelled right and never pronounced correctly. How hard was that growing up to just – doesn't it get annoying at times? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's what – it's not. It's not that annoying when someone's like, "How do you say it?" But it's annoying when somebody like thinks they know and they like dig in real hard. They're like, "Excuse me, Mr. Folies," and I'm like, "Hey, first of all, mom." <laughs> oh wow! There you go. And now I, I'm sure they always got Ryan right, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. the only idiot that screwed that up. It's fine. All right. So speaking of your mom, your mom and dad are pretty well known writers. Yeah. In Nashville, speaking, and you grew up in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. So how cool was it? Because right around the time they were writing their first big hits for. Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, Faith Hill and, yeah, and all and that. Martina. You might have been what in your? I was in my yeah, I was in my teenage years. Yeah. So um, how cool was it? Yeah, Dad, how was like hanging with Tim tonight? It was. It was. I don't think I knew how cool it was when I was a kid, um, <laughs> because I I think that's part of the charm of Nashville is it's it. Even though there's huge country stars and, and people that live there, they, people kind of are, are very respectful and kind of leave you alone a little bit. And mm -hmm. I don't think I knew how how cool it was to go to a number one party or to like do anything like that when I was. 12, 13 years old until I'm like, now I'm sitting here talking to you. I was like, wow, that's actually pretty awesome that that's what they called a job. Yeah. And you missed that opportunity. You're like, dang it. Why? I know. I did. I did actually play cards with Tim McGraw at his number one party though. Good. Yeah. Did he let you win? Um, I think the was, guy's very I think competitive. it was Go Fish and I'm pretty, oh, okay. I'm pretty sure he did let me win. <laughs> now you didn't take the avenue though. You didn't go down the country music route to start. No, you I went a not. different direction. I wrote, I wrote country songs as a kid and, and as a teenager when I was just writing, I was kind of writing everything because I liked everything, and um, I did. A, I started a rock band that kind of turned into a pop band, and um, we ended up uh, having a really, really good run. Mm -hmm. And um, I just—you can say the name; it's okay. My, my band's name was Hot Shell Ray. There um, you go. <laughs> but my uh, my my heart wasn't it. Wow. Yeah. See now, what's the difference? What's the main difference you've seen between, say, that avenue of music and the country side of it? I just love the the community of the, the way that country makes you feel and makes people feel and the, the way it feels at a show and um, just the all around the kind of the charm of the way that I grew up is seems to be sort of attached to the uh, to the music and the genre everywhere you go. So you're no stranger to being out on the road and all that. No. So what's the thing that you have to do to get away from music? What's your favorite thing to do to get away from music? Um, I I definitely like I love animals. So um, that's that's an awesome way to kind of like an animal can turn you into like a child in a second. You know, you're like you're playing this awesome show and you see a puppy and you're like, <laughs> like for you know, it just melts you. Um, I love animals. Um, I like, you know, I like sports and 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 sometimes I like video games. Um, <laughs> it just depends, but uh, I definitely spend a lot of time with animals. Yeah, I mean, th there's never a bad day with an animal. No, absolutely not. And finally, um, the album's done. Yes. Okay, you get a chance to do a cover song on that album. What song are you going to put on it? I think I would have to do, um, I think I'd have to do one of my parents. I think, Ooh. yeah. Um, I think I'd do uh, one of the song that he wrote for Tim McGraw, something like that. I feel like it's, um, I was there the day he wrote it. And mm -hmm. um, it's, it, was, it was just, it, it kind of defines a whole, like, to me, a decade of, of country music. Oh, it um, was a major hit. Yeah. I mean, it still is. I and mean, I it's still like one of those timeless songs. I feel like songs. it brought a lot of people in to, to, to country. And um, that, to me, is what it's all about it's bringing people together it's you know that's what that's what it does do you ever go to your parents hey you know i helped you with that song i gave you that one word or something like uh, that uh i've i've tried <laughs> oh, nice i see what you did there something yep. like that um no i've 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 tried that it does not work <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen ryan falaze thank you thank you there we go there you go long vine you got it